Chapter 2 Elora jerked awake, a thought prodding her mind insistently. It was important. Today was important, and she had to be sure to wake up on time. But why? She looked around the room, hoping for clues. Perhaps she'd left herself a note. She was usually good at remembering to do that if the event was important enough. She was pretty certain it wasn't a holiday or a new class coming. But then what was it? And then she saw the strings laid out beside her unfinished harp. Excitement sparked, tingling on her tongue and sending a thrill of urgency through her. She had to move and do it now. Ellera jumped up from her bed, running to the harp, her fingers hovering over it, afraid to touch lest in her excitement she break or drop it. Ellera! A voice called, landing heavy like a wet blanket over her sparking excitement. Ellera let out a heavy sigh. Of course she would be needed early today, when she was so close. She stared a few more moments at the nearly finished harp, resigning herself to the necessary further waiting. I'm coming, she called out the door. She folded a paper swiftly around the strings and placed them and the unfinished harp under her pillow, flinging the blanket over the bed and hoping it looked uninteresting. She grabbed her work apron, tying it on and jogging down the stairs. Whoever had called her seemed to be gone, but Millie was there. Millie was an acquaintance, a maid in the school. She might have been a friend, except that Ellera usually had at least one secret, and Millie's tongue was known throughout the school. She knew of everything that went on, and seemed incapable of keeping any scrap of knowledge to herself. "'What's going on?' Ellera asked her. Millie glanced around and lowered her voice, setting her broom against the wall. "'I think there were some students that tried making potions by themselves last night.' Ellera put a hand over her mouth. "'They didn't test them on themselves, surely?' Millie nodded solemnly. "'Are they all right?' "'Not so loud.' "'Shh, I think so. "'They made a royal mess of the library trying to find a cure for whatever it was they did.' Millie offered a sympathetic grimace. Ellera nodded slowly, and then remembered some of the other things that would happen that day. "'And Professor Everard is going to be coming at nine, all grumpy if it's still a mess.' She groaned. "'Dear, that'll be a lot of work.' I'll go there now. Save me something from breakfast, will you? Millie nodded, turning back to the kitchens and nearly forgetting her broom. Ellera hurried down to the library, groaning as she looked around. It was such a mess. Scrolls were flung everywhere, unrolled or in piles, mixed with books, splayed open. There was even a whole bookshelf knocked over, and several haphazard piles of books on the floor, most likely a frenzied student collecting everything remotely related to the subject and flipping through each one looking for a cure. She felt bad for the students, especially the ones that had had poorly made potions applied to them, but she was also annoyed. She wasn't even properly studying magic, and she knew better than to apply any kind of spell or potion to herself. Even the witch that had changed her had known that. She sighed heavily, and then tried to find a good place to start. Probably the fallen bookshelf. She eyed it for a few minutes, trying to figure out how she was going to do it. Finally, she picked out a spot working her fingers under the edge in a gap that was there because of a book the shelf had landed on. She lifted, and once she managed to get it above waist level, she flapped her wings hard, using the propulsion forward and up to get the shelf back to a standing position. Now to gather all those scattered books and scrolls into piles. There were far too many to fit in the library cart. She worked as quickly as she could, and soon everything looked a lot better though she knew well that the neat-looking stacks of books would take ages to sort and properly put away. Hello, someone said brightly just behind her. Elora jolted, spinning around, her wings flaring out instinctively, and she very nearly hit Asha in the face with them. Oh, sorry, Asha winced apologetically. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. I was just happy to find you here when I came. Elora tucked her wings back in, feeling just as apologetic as Asha and a little embarrassed. It's all right, and I almost hit you. Asha smiled and chuckled slightly. They look so soft, I don't think I would have minded, even if you did. Elora suddenly felt her cheeks get very warm. Even of people that liked her, no one ever complimented her wings. Uh, thank you. Um, what, what did you come for? Asha looked rather amused at Elora's fluster, which was very unfair when she'd been the one to cause it. I was told to look for a certain book. Mr. Ritter said it would help me work from plants I already know to learn about new ones. It's called The Botany of Travel, a plant's eye view of the world and how to traverse it. Ellera thought for a while. 
I don't know that one particularly, but I do know where to start looking. As much as she wanted to go with Asha, she knew she didn't have any time. When the first classes that were actually meant to be invading the library arrived, it would need to be at least mostly clean, with books and scrolls in their proper places. If you go over that way, Elora directed with an open-handed gesture, there's a few shelves on magical plant life. You should try the right side of the leftmost one. For half a second, Asha looked as disappointed as Elora felt at having to leave her to look alone, but her expression smoothed quickly into an appreciative smile. Thank you. Um, perhaps this evening, whenever you aren't busy, we could talk again? Elora felt all warm at this clear indication that Asha really did want to spend more time with her. That would be great! I'll try to get out maybe a bit before dusk, unless you'd be busy then? That'd be fine, Asha said, and her eyes crinkled up as she smiled in the prettiest way. If you want, I can bring a blanket and we could have a picnic dinner. That sounds amazing, Elora said, hopefully not looking dumb and puppy-eyed. She could feel her feathers fluffing up and could only pray it wasn't too obvious. I can bring the food then. Asha nodded and stepped once to the side. I'll see you then. Elora waved as Asha walked away, feeling almost lightheaded. She finally tore her eyes away from that section of the library and started sorting through one of the stacks of books, habit taking over the process as her mind was still whirling far above her. Fantasies of fireflies and picnics and smells of green things and spices, of dark skin and flashing smiles and sweet words that warmed her to her core. Somehow, she finished before Professor Everard arrived with the first class of the day, though how she'd organized and put away so many things in the short time she didn't remember at all. She slipped away from the library to eat some breakfast, trying to settle back down to earth and properly consider things like the rest of her day and how she was going to get food for a picnic dinner. She didn't exactly want to show up with the same dinner as the students, crammed into some kind of carrying container, but she didn't know what other options she had. She might have to talk to the cook which was tricky. Wings and being easily startled didn't exactly mesh with a busy and chaotic kitchen. Or perhaps she could have Millie ask for her? No, Millie would be too curious about why and would tease once she knew, or at least spread the story, and then several people would tease, or even worse. She was absurdly giddy about something as small as having a picnic dinner, and it wasn't even like it meant anything, except that it did to her. At the very least, it meant that Asha liked her as a person. And perhaps, if she could hope, after tonight she might like her as a friend. It was a new feeling, to be liked so genuinely and obviously so soon. She knew she shouldn't get her hopes up, especially since Asha would be leaving someday, but she'd always wanted a really, really close friend. Someone to talk to and to listen back, to lay together beneath the clouds or the stars. Someone to hug for longer than the few seconds of a greeting, to hold hands with. Someone to be very close with in several different ways. It seemed possible now to have this dream at last fulfilled. And she liked Asha. A lot. Very quickly. It scared her a little, to be honest. She was hoping for the possibility of this close relationship with Asha already, and she'd barely even met her. It was her own mind flying so far ahead that was causing the problems. She needed to back up and slow down. It was just a picnic dinner. Yes, it meant that Asha enjoyed spending time with her and wanted to spend even more time, and that was still very exciting. But it didn't mean more than that. She needed to calm herself. She took a deep breath and set aside her empty plate. Now she just had to figure out how she was getting dinner and when she was going to do her rounds of the library. She had to be careful to seem to be present whenever the professors came through, and had to be sure that the library would stay clean and organized. It shouldn't be too hard. She was good at slipping away and getting back before anyone noticed she was gone. Which she really should do now. She'd been gone a while. She put the empty plate back where Millie had left it, rather than properly in the dirty dishes bin, leaving open the possibility of returning it as an excuse to go into the kitchens and talk to the cook later. Hopefully no one had made a mess in the library while she was eating. Elora opened the library door, slipping in and then just staring, an exasperated sigh escaping her. It was first years again. For some reason, there was a good half of the class pulling out books and leaving them open on tables without a teacher to be seen, and she didn't have the authority to stop them. Not only was she not the librarian, just an assistant, but she was also seen as cursed by everyone, which seemed to give them all permission to ignore her, or worse. She just had to wait and clean up the best she could while they were here and once they left. It was incredibly frustrating. 
But then she saw the same young boy as she'd helped the day before, head bent over a book at a short distance from most of the rest of the students. He'd been polite. Perhaps she could at least learn why they were trashing her library without supervision. Hey, she said quietly, not wanting to startle him from his intent reading. He looked up, his head jerking up on instinct before his eyes left the page. Ellera smiled slightly. He would do well here if he could get past a few years of bullies. Oh, hello. He didn't seem embarrassed, or like he felt caught in the act of anything. Perhaps the students actually were allowed to be in here? She waved slightly. I was wondering what your class is doing here. It isn't on the schedule. My... He blinked, a slight furrow of confusion appearing between his brows. Oh, my class. Yes. Uh, we're, uh, just going off schedule today. Ellera was immediately suspicious. Is that so? Which teacher approved that? The boy stammered some kind of nonsense, slowly flushing a shade darker. I forgot her name? Ellera nodded, trying to hide her amused smile. You aren't a part of the class, are you? He froze, looking very obviously trapped. Ellera didn't know exactly what was going on, but she decided, at least for now, to cut the kid a break and propose an easy story. Look, if you're being tutored one-on-one, -on -one, you can just say so. Bullies might think you're stuck up or rich and snobby, but not everyone will, and they'd bully you for anything else, too. It's fine, I can ask another student what the class is doing. The boy's mouth dropped open. Um, yes, I, I am being tutored. Sorry I couldn't help you. Ellera nodded. It's all right, I'll ask someone else. The boy let out a too loud sigh of relief as she left. For someone sneaking in on classes, he was far too obvious. Though she could certainly understand not being able to pay tuition. It certainly wasn't a cheap school. She tapped another student on the shoulder, one who was laying out the fifth open book on a table. She put on her most professional, intimidating voice. Excuse me, but what are you all doing? The student spun around wide-eyed and then sighed with relief upon seeing who she was. We're just looking up things. Ellera put her hands on her hips, narrowing her eyes. What kinds of things? Why should I tell you? He snapped. Ellera raised an eyebrow. Because then maybe I won't report you to the professors. The student glared. Oh, fine. We're trying to figure out what that one girl did to herself, because once she undid it, she threw up gold. Ellera openly grimaced. That can't be good for her insides. The student shrugged. She seems fine. They were really trying to recreate it. Ellera spun around. She was absolutely reporting this. Hey, wait! The student yelled. All eyes turned at the shout. For a moment, no one moved, and the library was completely silent. Ellera felt frozen under the many stairs. She's gonna tell! The student yelled, pointing at her. Ellera ran. Instantly, she was mobbed by the students. She flung her wings open, flapping at them all, and they backed away for a second. Ellera half ran, half flew to the doorway, ducking through and racing away. The crowd of students pressed after her, footsteps thundering closer as they chased. She had been here longer than any of them, and she knew several of the hidden passages and strange intersections. There was one, if she could just reach it, with magical, invisible stairs. She couldn't walk on them, only the wizards could, but the hallway they came from, if she could get up to it, would take her to safety. The other end of the hallway opened far across the school, in the middle of the teachers' rooms, where the students wouldn't dare to go. And they certainly wouldn't have a way of reaching the near end without magic that was years beyond their level. The biggest question, though, was, could she make the jump? She didn't practice flying often at all, she didn't have nearly enough time, and her wing muscles were nowhere near enough to support her in the air. But she'd made this jump, assisted by her wings, three times before. The most recent had been a good month ago, though, unhurried and without an audience, and she had still nearly fallen then. But maybe she could. She spun around the corner, cursing her own slowness and lack of stamina as she felt something brush her wing, which meant they were close enough to try grabbing. She pushed herself to run a bit faster, knowing she had to make one more turn to the left, and then she had to make it along that hall, which would hopefully be empty, and then as soon as she got into the open intersection, she had to jump and leave maneuvering till the last second. Height would be by far the most important. She grabbed the corner of the wall and pulled herself into the left turn so she wouldn't have to slow down, running as fast as she could down that last hallway. There it was. 
She ran out into the open area, spreading her wings and flapping hard, jumping up into the air as high as she could. Behind her, however many of the students that were still chasing, shouted something she didn't pay any attention to. She was just trying for height and power, and wasn't able to aim. She crashed half into the side of the opening, only barely managing to twist into the second-story hallway rather than falling backward nearly ten feet to the ground. She gasped for air, pain pulsing dully along her right side as her vision tunneled and became dark and blurry. She couldn't pass out. She'd gotten herself somewhere they couldn't reach, but they'd be able to find a way around to her, or a ladder, or something, if she gave them enough time. They were still shouting something, but all her attention was focused on breathing in and out. She couldn't tell and didn't care what they were saying. Oh dear, someone said, very close to her, and she managed to languidly turn her gaze towards them. It was the single one of the professors that would actually talk to her, a very old wizard named Azar, who taught the fifth-year class, stooping over her low enough that his white beard brushed her arm. What's going on here? I wouldn't have thought you were the type for dares, Elora. Dares? She slowly began to register some of the words from below. They must have seen Azar before she did, and were explaining that they dared her to try and make the jump, but that she'd missed partially, and how proud they were of how close she'd been. The liars. If she could just manage to get enough breath back to say something. Elora just managed to shake her head, feeling more than a little dizzy, but still trying to communicate. You all go back to your class, Azar said. I'll take Elora and make sure she's checked by one of the healers. There was a sound of footsteps going away, and Azar mumbled some kind of spell which made Elora feel weightless and made her even more dizzy. She closed her eyes, pain and vertigo chasing each other around within her. At least she was able to breathe a little easier now. I'm glad to see you making friends with the students, but really, you ought to be more careful, Azar chided, making a motion over her that lifted her slightly and made her move towards him. Elora floated along a few inches above the ground until they'd made it back to Azar's office and she was laid on the couch. See if you can sit up and hear some water, Azar offered gently, holding out a cup in one hand with his other ready to help steady her. Elora carefully sat up and pain exploded behind her eyes. She winced, groaning and curling in on herself. The cup was put into her hands, and Azar set a hand gently on her head. It took a few minutes, but slowly the pain faded away. Thank you, Elora finally said, opening her eyes and taking a sip of her water. You're welcome, though you still have quite a bump on your head. I'd be careful of that if I were you. Azar stood up and started walking back to his desk. Elora nodded, suddenly remembering. Oh! The students! They're trying to recreate what happened to another student this morning. I was coming to report them, and that's why they were chasing me. Azar looked at her grimly. You're certain? You haven't hit your head too hard? I'm very sure, Elora interrupted. They hadn't found the recipe yet when I left, but they were all in the library, about half of the first year class. Azar stroked his long beard thoughtfully. That kind of idiocy does sound apropos of the first year class. I'll speak with some other teachers. We'll look into it. You can stay here and rest. Elora slumped back against the couch in relief. Azar turned toward the door and then turned back. You say those three were chasing you? Elora wasn't sure about how many exactly had kept chasing all the way to the end, but she nodded. I think most of them stopped chasing once I made it out of the library. Azar nodded again, slow and thoughtful, stroking his beard again. I see. I'll return shortly. Once he left, Elora laid down. All the adrenaline was fading, and she felt sore and exhausted, but at least she'd reported it. Whatever trouble the students got in would be far less harmful than something like poisoning themselves and throwing up gold. An old gray cat slunk out from under the couch. He was probably nearly as old as Azar was, and Elora was pretty certain that he was a familiar too, not just a cat, which made her like him a lot. It made them a bit similar. She held out a hand to the cat, and he sniffed at her fingers, eyeing her again before jumping up onto the couch. Elora closed her eyes, and the cat kneaded into her side, sharp claws pricking into her. Ow! Don't! She whined, squinting one eye open to pout at the cat. His tail swished, and he kneaded again. She didn't want to knock the cat off of her, 
but she was too tired to do more than weakly bat at him, which he just sidestepped, settling onto her knees and kneading with his claws out. He very rudely kept her from napping the entire time until Azar returned. Azar held out a small container to her, which turned out to be filled with a cold potato salad. I've brought you some lunch. Thank you for reporting them. We arrived just before they put a very dangerous spell onto one student, who would have been extremely sorry to have agreed with them. As one of several punishments, those students will be cleaning the library for you until the last color of your bruise fades, and then you will be receiving a written apology. Ellera nodded. Thank you. I'm glad they're all okay. As am I. I'll have to get back to my own class now, but you're welcome to stay in my office as long as you like. Thank you. Thank you, Ellera. Azar bowed slightly towards her. The cat jumped from the couch up to Azar's shoulder, and then Azar left again. Ellera sighed in relief, glad to have it all over. She took the food with her and walked slowly back to her room to eat there. And then she saw her own face in a mirror, mottled black and blue with a massive bruise on her forehead and a smaller but still very ugly one on her right cheek. She winced and let out a long groan as she realized Asha was going to see her looking like this in the evening. 